So, hello, welcome back to the next episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. Um, today we were going to go through some Reddit things. Um, probably, yeah, the first one, once again, is by the Stoicism subreddit. I, well, true of my chest, maybe we're going to go through some other things today. Um, some other sub, well, let's actually just do it right now. Them that is interesting. Because it got suggested to me. Let's see. In 1998, Honduras built a bridge over the Calacuta River, but Hurricane Mitch rerouted the river. <laughs> you, for all the podcast listeners, well, this is actually only a podcast right now, but um, you have a river and you see, um, well, a bridge. And the bridge is standing in the nowhere. And really next to it, like a centimeter next to it, there you have the fucking water. So, <laughs> insanely bad luck, I would say. Uh, this is the brilliance of the Joker and the illusion of Joyce. He gives Dent the option to kill him right then and there to end the madness or join his ranks. The choice is simple because there, is, uh, there isn't one. Look at the Joker's finger. Even if then pulled the trigger, the hammer wouldn't fall. Dark Knight fact. Well, the more we know. And by the way, I think, I'm not sure, but I think that The Dark Knight is actually one of the highest rated films ever. Ever. You know, not in today, not in tomorrow. Ever. Which is, I, I think, not only on... Rotten Tomatoes, and I think not only on IMDb, but I think also on, on Meta, like Meta who are uh, also scoring, well not scoring, but rating video games and all sorts of shit. I think they have also The Dark Knight. I don't know which exact title, you know, if it is Dark Knight Rises or like Dark Knight period, I think. Yeah, anyway. But all of them are very, very highly rated with music, by the way, uh, from Hans Zimmer who is an amazing componist and musician and I think even self-taught, if I remember it correctly, which is insane. You know, if you listen to his pieces and to what he did, it's fucking amazing. Let's have a look. Well, there isn't too much there, so I'm just gonna go back again. Saved you a click. Gamer news, world news. Is it possible to embody stoicism even if you aren't going through hard times? Well, I would say yes, and that's it. I just woke up at 5.20 a.m. and took a cold shower. First time waking up before 7 in years. What far cry from last year when I'd had, uh, when I'd have either just passed out from drinking or being ro be rolling around in half sleep hungover about that time. Hmm. Amazing. I enjoy that. And I don't know. I think it is something that we all should feel and, and try. As stupid as it may sound, but I know there are some people that really don't like getting up early. But I think, well, I first of all enjoy it. So maybe this is relevant that I'm going to say or not. But I think it it is just great. And I think it is a great experience. And I think it is quite the same for everything. I mean... Okay, try it out. And I'm not talking about drugs or some other shit. But okay, let's just try out doing this in a different way. You know, maybe today I'm not gonna wake up at 10 a.m. But I'm gonna wake up at 5 a.m. Just to try it out and just to see how I'm feeling. Without compromising sleep, by the way. And compromising feeling good and, and just everything. You know, you should be feeling good. It's, it's about waking up, you know and what it maybe does to you. And so cutting out all other variables makes sense, you know. Of course, if you're not sleeping enough, you're probably not going to be in that of a good mood and, and all sorts of shit. Image. When you can't control what's happening, challenge yourself to control the way you respond to what is happening. That is where your power is. And that is essentially the truth, you know. That's the very last, you know. When everything breaks down and everything is fucked up, the only choice that is left is the opinion that we're having about what is happening. You know? 
which can change ultimately quite everything. Everything and anything, you know? If something bad is happening and you think about it in a different way than before, then, oh, all of a sudden it might be something that you actually enjoy. As dumb as it may sound and as, as strange, but it is what it is. Today I learned the most successful Nazi interrogator in World War II never physically harmed an enemy soldier, but treated them all with respect and kindness, taking them for walks, letting them visit their comrades in the hospital, even letting one captured pilot test fly a plane. Virtually everybody talked. So maybe violence isn't just often a good idea and often a good solution to a problem, you know, whether it is in the private space or when it is about something like that, which of, of course is way more major, but yeah. I love the number eight on this document. Fourth report, Un-American Activities in California, 1948. And yes, the eight is actually, um, if you think about a fish being drawn, as simple as you can draw a fish, but rotated around 90 degrees. So that you have the flat side on the top and the rounded one on the bottom. And it actually looks pretty cool, not gonna lie. Communist front organizations. <laughs> well, yeah. My dad died today. I'm sorry, I really am. And this is a shout out to everybody that lost a significant other or someone that he or she just loves from the bottom of his or her heart in recent times. It's an amazing shit to go through and it's fucked up, it really is, you know, because you're never gonna get this person back, you know, besides the memories that you're having and the conversations and so on and so forth, of course, there is something left, you know, there is something that, um, you know, there is quite a lot in your mind and also your heart, probably. Let's actually... See if I can find, quite quickly, a good article. How to stop the same people from doing all the talking and other strategies to keep your meetings on track. Your fashion choices may be hurting the planet. Here are six ways to reduce your impact. It's time for everyone to see trans and non-binary people and support them. And here is how. Why saying Asians aren't good at math isn't a compliment, it's racism. Asians are good at math. Well, yes, it, well, is it, ah, stop Asian hate. Hate is a virus. Huh, it's, it's, huh, it's funny in itself. Anyway, yeah, is it racism? Well, yeah, probably. I mean, it's, it's making fun of a race. So, well, one could talk about racism there, you know. Did the pandemic make a dent in climate change? Climate scientist answers. The two kinds of praise we all need to get at work. Let's actually check out what we can do to reduce the impact that we're having on the world in terms of fashion choices. Choose lower impact materials. Cotton and polyester, two materials with a high environmental impact, dominate the fast fashion industry. Cotton production relies on pesticides and fertilizers that generate a nitrous oxide or N2O, a greenhouse gas with more warning potential than methane or methane, whatever, and carbon dioxide. It also requires large amounts of water. In fact, a single condition can take up to 2,700 liters or 713 gallons of water to produce. Meanwhile, polyester has a massive carbon footprint. Polyester production for textiles released about 706 billion kilograms. 1.5 trillion pounds of greenhouse gases in 2015. So instead of cotton and polyester, choose lower impact natural materials, including wool, linen, and uh, leucel, which is made from wood pulp. Amazing. Buy less and mend more. Think about it. Purchase secondhand and vintage. I mean, I gotta be honest, you know, some sometimes, um, whether it is in thrift stores, even though they are, I think, not even existent in where I'm living, but I know about them in other countries, you can really get cool stuff there, you know? And and also in secondhand shops, and I actually know some secondhand shops that are fucking amazingly expensive. And I don't know why, and I don't understand why. You know, maybe this marketing could be the case. I think they're doing actually quite well 
and well you know at this point in time probably not since they all are closed and shit i think might be i don't know but yeah yeah there are also fashion rental options like Renster Runway and Aramoa that give you access to special occasion dresses or monthly subscription boxes of designer pieces. While renting can be a great way to wear trendy clothing with less impact, using their in-person drop-off and pick-up locations like Renster Runway's swap shops can combat the environmental cost of packaging, shipping and returning items. Looking into brands' labor practices. Check a brand website to see if they pub, uh, publicly list their supply chain information or search for it on sites like Fashion Checker. You might also consider reaching out on social media to ask about their labor practices, even though they're probably not going to answer if it is a major company like fill in the gap. Not only could this start a conversation, it can also signal to the brand that consumers want supply chain transparency and maybe that consumers also want to have change. Support indigenous businesses. Many indigenous, indigenous people still carry the knowledge of living in harmony with nature, which might actually be racist. I don't know. Well, hmm, I don't know, but it's a cliche, you know, as, okay, Asians are good at math is also a cliche, you know. I mean, there probably are some indigenous people that really don't fucking care about the, the nature, even though, I mean, would be dumb, you know, because they, they probably are living off of nature as we are doing as well but you know we are not directly doing so um since i mean there is a there is something in between us and nature like farmers and the whole supply chain thing and whatnot um which is key for our world tackling climate change right now says women's wear designer angel jang or jang however this knowledge lies with the elders whose wisdom is quickly disappearing Consumers can support indigenous artists by purchasing items that are made in the traditional way according to the cycles of nature following techniques passed down from their ancestors. Champion new scientific technology. We also know that the environmental, environmental crisis we have faced cannot be solved with a drop in replacement technologies alone because this market logic ignores difference creates monopolies and reinforces dominant power structures, many of which have directly caused and sustained our environmental and social crisis. GSS, led by a strong desire to transition from a world built on historic and ongoing explorative models to a more just future, citizens will signal a preference for products from companies built from the ground up to protect both people and planet. So yeah, of course, you know, it's all about communication. Um, I still think that, you know, companies would be changing things if there was enough people um, wanting it, basically. I mean, if all of them want to have that and they're not going to buy anything else, companies are forced to do that, you know? It's all about fucking money for them, you know? But yeah, I'm going to see you next time. Bye-bye.